Good evening. This is Learning Team 2's project on Starbucks. In the team is myself, Brittany Coleman, Candace Hooks, and Mabel Brito. The history of Starbucks, originally known as the Starbucks Coffee, Tea, and Spice Company, the organization was founded and based in Seattle, Washington. The first store opened and Pike Place Public Market Center in 1971. The organization was led by Zed Siegel, Jerry Baldwin, and Gordon Boker. Initially, the organization intended only to sell within the Seattle marketplace. It had no intention on spreading outside of the metro Seattle area, and furthermore, it had no intentions on selling anything outside of coffee beans and coffee equipment. However, with the introduction of Howard Schultz, that soon would change, and the organization of Starbucks would soon change as we know it. Howard Schultz is the man behind the success of the modern Starbucks. He was born in Brooklyn, New York on July 19, 1953. Before even joining Starbucks, he had already started his career as an appliance salesman for Hammerplast. He sold particularly coffee appliances. However, in 1982, he would be introduced to Starbucks, the founders of Starbucks, and he would go on to become the director of retail operations for the organization. However, his idea of what he saw, the vision of Starbucks, was a lot different from the founders. Howard Schultz understood what Starbucks could be based on his experience working as a coffee appliance salesman and traveling back and forth from the U.S. to Europe. He saw success overseas with coffee houses, and he thought that he could perhaps bring that to the U.S. However, the founders were not as fond of his ideas. Um, they were very much set on coffee beans and coffee appliances and didn't have any, any desire to grow beyond that. They saw themselves as a very local chain and wanted to keep it that way. That conflicted with Howard's vision. And ultimately in 1985, he would leave the Starbucks Coffee and Tea Spice Company and start his own company uh, to Grinnell. That organization would itself be based in the Seattle area and would grow. The organization would grow so large that eventually... Two years later, he would have so much success with the organization that he would come back and actually purchase Starbucks. He purchased Starbucks along with the help of investors who he had convinced that he could make the Starbucks chain widely successful, not only in the States, but internationally. Um, and they believed in him. And so he joined as the CEO and chairman of Starbucks. And at that point, he had changed the name from the Starbucks Coffee, Tea, and Spice Company to simply Starbucks Coffee Company. In 2000, Howard would choose to leave the company again. Um, but this time, you know, things were going in a different direction and he had to step away to reinvent not only himself, but the organization as a whole. Um, and so in 2009, he came back with a very fresh perspective and that he had a new mission of wanting to fulfill souls versus just fulfilling bodies. Um, he wanted to continue to reinvent and re-innovate the mission and the people and do what he can to keep things fresh and new and to continue introducing new ideas to the marketplace and to Starbucks and the customers and that way never allowing himself or the organization to become complacent. Starbucks does in fact encompass Singe's five learning disciplines. System thinking, there is an interdependence among all functions of Starbucks and they do work together as a whole system. In addition to that, they have personal mastery and there's an individual commitment amongst not only the leadership, but also the team and the individuals that encompass that team um, to ensure that process of learning is always there. Team learning is 
very much a part of the Starbucks experience where not only individuals are individually seeking knowledge and learning themselves, but they're bringing back that knowledge and sharing it with the team. So therefore exposing everyone to the same knowledge and everyone's growing together. Additionally, there's mental models in which they're working together to unlearn unwanted values and then trying to build up new values that work well within the organization and make them a solid organizational learning team. And lastly, the shared vision. The shared vision works from all the way from Howard Schultz all the way down to the baristas. Everyone understands the mission and the vision and they are living it not only in their daily lives, but also at the workplace. Under Howard Schultz, the mission statement has changed. Previously, the mission statement read, to establish Starbucks as a premier provider of the finest coffees in the world while maintaining our, our uncompromising principles as we grow. With this mission statement, the company is beginning to focus on developing a product with the finest qualities of ingredients to ensure that they are offering the best product to the customers. Whereas now, the mission has changed. The mission now is to now is to inspire and nurture the spirit, one person, one cup, one neighborhood at a time. This mission statement reinforces the notion that the company is now seeking to place more, much more emphasis on the customers and ensuring that they have the best quality of product along with an environment and ambiance that will add to improving the overall experience of the customer. The company has gone through a recession in 2008 and with much more focus on strategy that has changed their mission statement. Today, the company has been able to attain aspirations where all the employees are typically aware of their role and that they are required to perform in the organization and have attained a level of personal mastery where each employee is dedicated towards achieving a shared vision. When we compare Starbucks to other organizations of its magnitude and offerings, we're able to really get a good glimpse of how Starbucks compares to its competition. For instance, at Starbucks, every individual working in the Starbucks facility is referred to as a partner. Employees value the company and the company values the employees. They have a shared vision, there's system thinking involved, and when looking at Singe's discipline, the best line that comes to mind is faster always leads to slower. Whereas their competition, Dunkin' Donuts, offers a flexible work schedule, employee satisfaction and communication, maintenance of customer relations, employee relations, and of course, investor relations. Their discipline person is you can have your cake and eat it too, but not at once. Furthermore, their other competitor, Costa Coffee, Investment in human resource department in the way of achieving an organizational goal. Their discipline percentage is small changes can produce big results. And lastly, McDonald's. Employees are at the center. Information flows from the employees to all other de departments. And system thinking and shared vision are incorporated. Discipline percentage is dividing the elephant will not lead to the development of two elephants. When assessing Starbucks as a culture, it is clear based on the anger shine model that artifacts, the dress code, the organizational setting, the professionalism, the values, dedication, and the commitment of the employees, the shared vision, and the set goals, the assumed values, our consumers, our king, and customer satisfaction. Whereas Cameron and Quinn, they seek more of a clan culture. Whereas Starbucks operate 
with the social culture focused on commitment and communication and development. The advocacy culture where employees are energetic and creative. Leaders act as innovators and innovators act as visionaries. The market culture where reputation and success are self-exploration and is defined in market culture of Starbucks. The hierarchy culture where company has formalized and structured environment but is mostly influenced with informal operations and activities. The Singe model where a system thinking focused on developing relationships with investors, employees, and the community. A better view of a problem can be undertaken. Whereas personal mastery focused on improving the individual competencies and skills. Mental models, the employees assume the needs of the consumer and present them with ideas that can satisfy their needs. The shared vision, every individual is working continuously to achieve the mutual set targets. Team learning, Starbucks culture is directed towards team learning. Now, the learning disabilities. I am in my position. Employees are operating in their individual positions and are liable for their own actions. Employees are only are limited to their own activities and are not likely to be able to work on any other position. Now, the myth of management team. All executives have effectively and collectively defined the pathways for the organization. Employees are more focused on informal culture. Now with this comes the change plan. Considering the fast paced global changes that the company faces, it is important to adopt a new mission statement that reflects the value of global learning, knowledge sharing, social acceptance in all geographical regions. Based on this observation, an extreme evaluation and makeover is recommended for Starbucks. First, to go back to its roots of a company culture that saw its success and acceptance as a global company. And secondly, to adopt novel and revolutionary ideas that reflect the changing dynamics of the global and diverse cultures. It is proposed that the company should start this revolution by presenting its employees with fresh ideas that will act as their, their driving principle which they can quickly embrace and depend upon as their guiding mission. It should go beyond a mere statement of words to a revolutionary movement that will not only engage every employee regardless of their level, but also give them a sense of ownership and responsibility for the ultimate well-being of the company. Furthermore, leadership theories. Transformational leadership, Starbucks transformational leadership should be based on trust, common aspirations, and development of charismatic leadership talent that communicates the global learning and cultural awareness strategy in an effective manner to all employees. In this regard, Starbucks also has the advantage of having leaders who portray transformational leadership qualities, including deep personal commitment as well as team and follower commitment to a common goal and additional to the culture of high standards in all their leadership endeavors. The leadership grid, the leadership grid developed by Blake and Mouton combines leadership concerns for the production of relationships or people. The model also presents five key options for behavioral leadership styles. The proposed style that will see Starbucks a more effective global leader should ensure that leaders and managers have the unique capability of simultaneously demonstrating a high concern for both production and people relationships. Essentially relying on team management approach. Operating within the hospitality industry, the company sells not only product, but also service. Thus, these two components must be effectively and efficiently incorporated. In conclusion, Starbucks has one of the most dynamic organizational cultures within the industry. 
an advantage that makes the company stand out amongst its key competitors. However, as the company continues to expand its operation to new and unchartered global region, it is of utmost importance to adopt a more dynamic organizational culture that will transform the company to a global leader and a leader in terms of cultural awareness and responsiveness in all its outlets. Leadership and management strategies should account for the different culture attributes and characteristics at various levels, including individual, organizational, national, and global levels. Achieving this level of transformation will require a transformational leadership approach, a leadership strategy that Starbucks has effectively applied over the years, enhancing a sense of ownership, loyalty, commitment among employees while depending on the leadership abilities to reduce the gap between leaders in-group and out-group. Thank you very much.